Then Abhinav Gupta points out the commentator, the Vyakhyakar, that this indicates the primacy of angik abhinay, something which you do with your body. Because in Natya, what is most important is the angik relating to the body. I am sure you must have been studying here the theory about what is the human body as represented in Indian dance and hence in Indian painting and hence in Indian sculpture. You know all classical sculpture in India is out of Natya Shastra. <laughs> it is out of 108 Karanas. All the sculpture that you see, all the movement. And before we do that, we see the human body. Because the human body is a representation of the universe. The body, this human body, represents the great universe, the Brahma. The Brahmand, the larger egg, it is reflected in this pind or the smaller body. There is a classical concept which was formulated in Indian art. Yat pinde tad brahmande or the converse yat brahmande tad pinde. That is, whatever is in this universe is in the body. This body reflects a totality of the universe. Now, this is a very specifically Indian thought. It's not to be found in European scheme of art or the Greek scheme of art. Perhaps not in the Chinese, I know very little about it, so I'll make no comment. But certainly it is not in the European and in the classical Europe, uh, ancient Greek or Roman, the vision that this body represents the universe. Because in the Christian chain of being, Man is somewhere in the middle, there is God at the top and there is Satan at the bottom and there is a chain of being. The human body does not represent the whole chain of being. The human body is placed at a given spot in that chain of being. That chain of being is the macrocosm. Of course, the man, the human being is related to that chain of being. And it should not come out of his or her place. And when you see Renaissance art, like if somebody has studied Shakespeare, etc., you will see examples of <coughs> assertion of this idea. But in the Indian scheme, this body is the universe. And therefore you bring the whole universe in it and you talk about the whole universe from it. So your hands, your eyes, your hair, your movement, your waist, your every part of the body can talk about something in the universe or can symbolically represent the universe. This is the description of the pind or the human body and the real angik. Angik abhinay is not just uh, you know holding hands, khatka uh, mukha or pataka hasta. It's not just this. Angik abhinay is not simply a codified movement because this codified movement has taken place with the concept that this body is the universe. And so, you will have new movements and you will have new symbols. 
Once you start thinking, you can create new symbols and new mudras, hasta mudras, nitta hastas, etc. Because you think that this body represents the universe. Unless you have that concept. This is primarily related in the Vedantic thought. Aham Brahmasmi and the body is also Brahma. The body is also Brahma because the body is not something disassociated with the spirit. It is not the classical Greek distinction of psyche and soma. Soma is the body and psyche or psyche is the mind or the interconnection psychosomatic as we say. No, because the body which consists of five elements is also connect, not just connected, just gets transformed into mind because the mind also consists of five elements and their consequences. So, this interrelation is the fundamental of this art and the freedom that it gives us. Whatever is in the universe, we can represent through the body and hence shirsa. You understand now? The use of the word shirsa, pranamya shirsa, 